Yo guys and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my F1 2019 career mode here today for round number 7 of the season for the Canadian Grand Prix episode 8 in total. If you guys have missed any of the previous episodes you got a chance to check them out by clicking on the card in the top right hand corner of your screen or clicking the link down below in the description and uh, before any spoilers come forward you guys can go check out the previous episodes before we jump into business here for the Canadian Grand Prix. Now for this race we've got quite an interesting one here. Our first um, semi wet qualifying mixed conditions qualifying of the season we had a fully wet one in Baku but this is going to be our first kind of mixed weather one and it could be quite tasty also upgrade wise we've got a failed engine upgrade which is a bit annoying um, I was hoping for that to arrive this race and hopefully have more engine power for this race because it is a power circuit unfortunately it is going to fail and uh, the R&D graph is going to stay as it was in the last race luckily for us Mercedes haven't brought any upgrades so it's going to stay the same going into this race, but hopefully we can add some upgrades at the end of this episode. But now we're going to jump into Friday practice at Canada, and um, straight away, I've got to be honest, it felt pretty damn good. Again, I'm racing on 108% AI, as I have been for the last couple of races, and um, the AI were definitely, it was very close. I, I really enjoyed it, and uh, practice gave me a good idea of where I was, and I think the pace could be quite close, to be honest with you. And even the Red Bulls are actually in the mix around here, which is quite good. And uh, overall, the practice was good. We managed to hit all of our targets in terms of the track acclimatization the qualifying pace and the race strategy which is the three that I always do and um, we also hit the actual objectives that are on the side as well so a pretty good haul of points to, uh, 235 I believe to be exact and uh, we're going to add those to the R&D bank but um Overall practice was good and uh, the pretty decent setup on to be honest and the car was working pretty nicely and uh, overall I felt relatively confident going to qualifying but I wasn't sure about the wet conditions that are going to be um, taking part in this condition in this session because as you saw there is rain expected halfway through qualifying to kind of disrupt I'd say a bit part of Q1 all of Q2 and part of Q3 is kind of in the middle so um, we're going to try and hit the track early in Q1 and get our lap done nice and early before the rain arrives because I believe it's going to arrive towards the end of Q1 so we want to try and make sure we uh, we got on track get our business done and then we can just go back to the pit lane and move on to Q2 there's Devin Butler though our fierce rival of course from Formula 2 and there is Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes and um, of course he's the current favourite in the championship the five time world champion but now we're going to move into qualifying here and we're going to see how how things get on for qualifying in Canada and straight away we're gonna hit the track like I said nice and early because the rain is on its way so we're gonna see where the track is it's currently sunny in a minute and you wouldn't believe it's gonna rain but it is gonna rain very soon and you'll see it cloud over as the lap progresses here currently on my time lap now you can see that uh, Butler setting the pace in the Mercedes and we're gonna see if we can try and match him currently a little bit down a little bit nervous rear end there on the exit as you saw there leaving sector one and that towards the end of sector two we're about six tenths down here and uh, not the best lap so far a bit scruffy and the pace is a little bit slow at the moment and it seems like the AI did make a big step forward compared to practice even on 108 AI they were a lot quicker in qualifying than they were in practice so uh, that got me a little bit concerned in terms of my overall pace as we crossed the line for P8 there and uh, almost a second down but still a good enough lap time that should see us through into Q2 and uh, actually P6 sorry and um, yeah overall pretty decent lap it started raining towards the end of Q1 and uh, you can see that the lap times for yourselves and Sebastian Vettel gets through on medium tyres and Butler set the pace in Q1 but now in Q2 we went out right at the end of the session and uh, because the conditions were at their best towards the end it was really raining heavily at the start and the rain was starting to just let off a little bit towards the end so I went out towards the end of the session on intermediates and uh, try and see if we could get a good lap in and to be fair similar to um, you know other races in the past I seem to have more pace in the wet in F1 2018 I used to have more pace in the wet and uh, this seems to be the story again around here I mean in Baku we really struggled with the full wets but with the intermediates I seem to have strong pace and I was fastest through sectors one or two and it was looking pretty damn good now as we go on the back straight and all we've got to do is try and take it nice and easy and sort out the final chicane here at the Wall of Champions and not mess it up as we take it nice and easily over the curbs on the power there on the exit keep it to the right hand side for the shortest run to the line and are we going to go quickest yes we do p1 That's for us fastest lap so far. Well indeed done. q1 uh, sorry p1 in q2 for us on the intermediate tires and uh, by the end of the session though you can see other people would improve elsewhere and surprisingly lewis butler and uh, vettel actually done their laps in the full wet so uh, quite surprising there but uh, we done ours in the inters and we was quickest so overall a good session for us but now we move into q3 and you can see the time at the top right one minute 50 to go because the start of q3 was wet on intermediate so there's no point in going out because i knew the track was going to dry out at the end and everybody hit the track with a minute or so to go on the dry tires we let everybody go past and the traffic clear and here we go then up to speed on our lap and we're going to see how we get on here in Q3 as you can see we are P10 and we're up against it here we need to try and set a lap time if we can 
and uh, of course Vettel's time to reference on intermediates but that's not really accurate as we go through the chicane here a little bit too aggressive there tapping the ball on the right hand side but still a pretty decent first set then nonetheless now down to this next left hander just trying to take a nice bit of curb on the inside easy on the throttle through the right let the car run wide but we get a little bit too leery on the exit a little bit too aggressive and we pick up a bunch of oversteer for good measure there on the exit onto the back straight and now into the next right left chicane combo here not enough curb on the inside right and we kind of take a compromise line and the exit wasn't the best either as you know go down towards the hairpin and uh, down to second gear now first gear just to pick up the rotation or lock up on the right front again just missing my apex slightly as we go out onto the back straight and overall the lap's been a bit over aggressive and a bit messy so um, I'm not sure if it's going to be good enough or not but you know that's what happens when it comes down to this one lap as uh, the clock's about to run out now as we go into the final chicane here all or nothing throwing the car in hoping it sticks a little tap of the wall and we actually lose an end plate there and overall a scruffy lap there to end qualifying and we did go P1 at the time, obviously the quickest lap because everyone else did their laps and inters. But come the end of the session, it was P6 and the pace was really poor. And ultimately, it just wasn't there. Sebastian Vettel though, does secure pole position for us in the Ferrari. And at least one Ferrari is looking pretty quick. Our lap was very messy though. And um, even on 108 AR, you can see that we still struggled here in Canada. So uh, overall, a disappointing qualifying, but hopefully we can turn it around in the race. And our fortunes are a little bit better tomorrow on Sunday and we can try and make something happen. With that being said, though, that is qualifying done and dusted, and we're now going to move into the race for round number seven of the season for the Canadian Grand Prix. Let's do this. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. With top speeds of around 210 miles per hour heading into the overtaking opportunity of turn 13, the 2.7 miles of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve are some of the quickest on the Formula One calendar. There are 14 corners in total, with 60% of the lap taken at full throttle, and average lap speeds clock in at about 130 miles per hour. It's a favourite for fans and drivers alike then here in Canada. We're used to seeing the unexpected happen here. And with me today to enjoy it all is Anthony Davidson, a man who knows firsthand the surprises that can pop up in this race. I do indeed. I had a good chance at some points here in 2007, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't meant to be. My old colleague Takuma Sato though, he managed to finish six. So the team took home three valuable points and that was a big boost to everyone at the time. I'm not sure I can think of anywhere else that so consistently provides the kind of late race excitement we get here. Obviously, towards the end of the Grand Prix, the brakes are getting worn, maybe the weather situation has changed, so there's a lot to keep fighting for all the way up to that final corner. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion. And Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Butler, Weber, Max Verstappen, Martinez, Ricardo, Perez, Magnussen, and Nico Hülkenberg, Raikkonen, Grosjean, Robert Kubica, and Stroll, Russell, Sainz, Lando Norris, and Antonio Giovinazzi. Fiat and Alexander Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Right, here we are on the grid then for the Canadian Grand Prix, round number seven of the season here today. And we're going to see how we get on. We do start from P6 and uh, we are last of the big boys, you could say. And, uh, at, you know, in, in sheer contrast, Sebastian Vettel starts from first place. So in terms of Ferraris, we're not doing too well. But still, we are in amongst it, you know, with the big boys. And hopefully we could try and have a good race. Now, um, starting from P6, of course, strategy is going to be interesting here today because I think the one or the two stop I'm not really sure which the better option is it's going to be very close um, I ran some numbers and uh, the original strategy on screen was soft medium hard but I've, I've kind of flipped it around so I want to get the harder tyres out of the way first also um, tyre wear seems quite marginal here the one stop apparently is slower so um, 
yeah, overall, I've gone for this strategy here where we run the softs at the end of the race to go really hard at the end in terms of pushing. Uh, mediums at first, might be too slow and hards in the middle of the race. In terms of fuel, we're one lap over. We're going to see how we go, though. I think this is the best layout for me. It suits the way I like to drive, especially pushing at the end. And hopefully, it can be the way forward and hopefully try and score a big result this race. Also, there could be other strategies elsewhere. You know, there could be other drivers who run a lot of soft tires and go very aggressive because, because of the rain, everyone's going to have a lot of soft tires left over. So it could be quite an interesting one. So let's see how it pans out, though. And uh, fingers crossed we could try and score a good result. Can we make it three wins in a row? It's going to be quite tricky, but I'm going to try my best. It is now time, though, for the race here for round seven for the Canadian Grand Prix. All right, here we go. The five red lights come on here at the circuit. Gilles Villeneuve for the Canadian Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. Not a terrible start, to be fair. We're going to manage to get over to the inside line and uh, protect that position. Almost time in contact there with Verstappen. Luckily, we just avoided it. It'll lock up as uh, Vettel leads. We've got a warning there for a collision with Verstappen. It was the smallest of touches. So, so vague and so little as we've got, looks like, Butler and uh, Weber there. Former rivals in F2 going side by side here through the fast right. I'm having a look at Verstappen again here. A little bit more contact there as we just bump him with our nose. Luckily, we don't get any damage as we go into the back straight here for the first time. Front wing is intact, which is good to see. We're going to struggle, I think, in this race in terms of the worn power unit components as we go into the chicane here. Good exit. We're going to get the run on Max Verstappen here. Let's try and get a bit of a toe. Verstappen sends one down the inside of Devon Butler at the hairpin. We're a little bit wide, locking up. Hopefully, we'll get a good exit, though. Onto the back straight, then. Let's see what we're like for straight line speed. Seems like we're okay at the minute. Not great speed, though. Not as fast as I have been, as Vettel still leads the way. Into the chicane now, and uh, into the Ball of Champions, of course. And lap one draws to a close. And we're still P6, but not a bad opener. Lucas Weber P3, Devon Butler down to P4. So if we can get past all three of these guys in the medium tyre, then we'll be looking pretty good. Lucas Weber is on the soft, and uh, Verstappen and Butler are on mediums like myself. So it seems like I want to guess maybe Seb and Lewis are also on softs based off of their pace and how well they started in this race. So um, we're going to see how this goes. Contrasting tyre strategies, even just amongst the top six, let alone people behind us. So this could be an interesting race. Devon Butler and Lucas Weber going at it again there into the chicane. As uh, Vettel and Lewis set the pace, and Lewis is actually going to overtake Seb for first place. At the minute, we're all over these guys. I just realised we're snapping on softs as well, so the Red Bulls are going more aggressive. At the minute, I can't lie, I'm struggling for pace a little bit. Um, seems like the AR a little bit quicker in race trim around here. But at the minute, Seb looks like he's staying in front of Lewis as well on the minimap. But at the minute, it's the Red Bulls who, even on the softs, don't have great pace, so... We're trying to get past them here. Myself and Devon Butler trying to make progress, but the Red Bulls are kind of equal pace. DRS is now enabled, though. We're kind of in this big, frantic DRS train. Hopefully we can make something happen on the back straight, maybe. Let's try and stay. Yep, the engine is warm, but like I said before, hopefully we can stay within range of the guys in front and use the DRS. That's a nice, clean exit there. Very, very nice. Beautiful traction. Overtake ERS engaged. I don't have much ERS already. I'm, I've kind of burnt through it quite a bit, so we're going to try and save a bit. Verstappen does go defensive quite heavily into the chicane. I'm going to have to back out for now and uh, not commit to the outside. I don't have the tyres for it. However, Max will have less of a toe here. We're going to try and power past this time into turn Engine one. Around the outside of Verstappen there. Nice move. Nice and deep on the brakes. Another reminder that the engine is starting to suffer. But this is our last race with this power unit, so let's just get through it. But we're now up to P5. We're past one of the Red Bulls. As Devon Butler's made the move on Lucas Weber as well. So let's try and close up on those two if we can. Okay, I'm starting to get the pace up a little bit. I'm starting to feel more confident. Personal best. And Vettel and Hamilton are battling very heavily at the front as Hamilton takes first place. And uh, they've lost pretty much their, their entire lead that they built up in the first five laps due to battling. Devon Butler's now P3. He's holding on. And uh, he's, of course, on those medium tyres. So I want to try and catch him up because he's on the same, he could be on the same strategy as me. So let's try and close the deficit if we can. Devon Butler setting the pace. Gap to teammate ahead is 2.3 seconds. A 12-1. That's good pace on the mediums. And he's now all over Sebastian here. I'm trying to save the RS a little bit, running it in none to see if I can get back on target because at the minute I'm a little bit low. 
front of four off bunch right up and I'm just struggling to get within the RS here because they're all in a DRS train and I want to try and close down if I can but they're just a little bit too far ahead. The good thing is though Sebastian Vettel is re-overtaking Lewis for first place. They're going to go side by side into the chicane. Hopefully that will slow everybody up a little bit. As uh, Look at that, it's almost three wide in front of us. It's all kicking off. All kicking off up front there for the battle for the lead. Now we're going to surely close up here and make up the one second deficit. Okay, then that's a very nice hairpin. We've got ourselves within range here, which is good. So I can now really save some ERS, which is what I want. And uh, really charge up the battery for a big attack when I need it. Also, I can maybe save some fuel as well here. That bump right before the chicane is a really nasty bump, I've got to say. It really ruins your confidence on the braking. At the minute, though, P5 looking good in the slipstream. This is what we want. Just a massive slipstream fest so far this race. Okay, so Lewis Hamilton is the first to pit in. Interesting. Seb stays out. He's going to be under pressure there from Devon Butler here into turn one. Also, Lucas Webber not too far behind. But the battle for the lead is on now, and Lewis is the first one to blink in terms of strategy. Poor exit there from Lucas Webber. We're going to put some pressure on here, and he actually goes defensive. I'm a little bit wide there in terms of turning in, but we'll just sit back for now. I'm not going to overcommit to anything. I don't have a lot of confidence at the minute. Um, I don't think we've got a great pace around here, to be honest, in race trim. So we're kind of just holding on thanks to the RS and some battling. So I'm not going to commit to any moves. I'm just going to try and sit Let's back for now. Use some of this energy. Increase the ERS deployment. Yeah, don't worry, Jeff. I've got it all sorted out. I'm just going to try and wait for the right time. There's always a, a right moment to strike. As Devin Butler starts to open up a gap out front. I think Seb's on soft, and I think he's starting to start to have enough. Into the hairpin, though. Let's see if we can uh, get nice and close to Lucas Weber here. And maybe try and have a good exit and get a run on him. Okay, this is good. We're pretty close. I'm going to crank up the battery deployment here. This could be a good chance for us. Here we go. The speed difference and the engine power compared to the Red Bull Honda. Here we go. We're gaining. We're going to go to the inside. On the brakes. Into the chicane. A little bit of a corner cut there, but I wanted to keep it safe. Big tank slap on the exit. As the Lucas Weber pits in. Seb stays out in the soft, so he's going a bit longer still. Let's see how this one goes. That's a very long first in from Seb on the soft tyres. But we're now P3. Hopefully I can get past. Because you can visually see how Seb is struggling on those tyres. And that's another thing this year. You can really tell, like I said in the other in the last episode, I think. But you can tell in this year's game, the AI, when they struggle with tyres. Unlike in past F1 games, you could they literally never struggle with tyre wear. This game you can see that they visually are struggling. Seb is now out of DRS from Devon Butler here, so. We're going to make the move fairly shortly. I'm just not going to be rash because I don't want, I don't want to compromise his race. So I could, I'll sit behind him for now and I'll try and pass him on the back straight nice and easily. He won't have any DRS, so I should have the engine power to do it. Into the hairpin. Nice and tidy there. On the power, there we go. We've got a full, pretty much, battery to deploy in terms of overall electronic deployment. Here we go, DRS on Seb. Let's make it an easy one, shall we? I think he might pit in to be fair. I'm going to turn in early. A little bit of a aggressive chicane there, but I didn't want to get in Seb's way as Verstappen. Verstappen joins Sebastian in the pit lane. So it's a 1 2 for me and Devon Butler here. And we're both on the medium. So let's see if we can try and keep pace with him. And at the minute, the one stop is still on the card. So it can't, we've, got, we've got to kind of judge the race on the fly and see how it goes. Um, I'll have a look at my tyres in a little while, but we'll see how we get on. Because I think I'm still at the pit around lap 12. So. We'll see how my tyres are, and I might see if I can go for the one stop. Box, box. We're coming in this lap. Okay, so we're pitting in this lap. Do I actually pit in though, or do I stay out? I'll have a look at my tyres on the back straight and make my decision. We're leading our teammate by 15.6 seconds. Okay, so Devin Butler pits in. He's had enough of those mediums, so we're going to stay out here. Looking at my tyre wear, 41 on the left rear as my most worn tyre, that's okay. I'm tempted to go for the one stop. I really am. If I get to lap 15, I can go for the one stop. Just three more laps. The thing with this circuit is the reason the one stop isn't as powerful is because of the pit exit. It makes it, like I think, a 17 second stop overall. It's a much shorter pit stop phase than usual. So you can get away with a two stop around here. But having said that, I don't really have the pace here today. So to try and do something different and roll the dice, I think I'm going to one stop it. I'm going to try. I was, you know, not shot first. But now that I'm in the race and I'm P1, I'm seeing how it's going, I'm, I'm going to give it a go. We've got 11 seconds gap on Lewis, we need to try and manage that for the rest of the race pretty much. As we've got a pretty much one stop left each. 
so that gap that we've got is a net gap. Okay, so Ricardo pits in, and there you go, information, quite interesting. Seb's on the soft tyres, so he's going aggressive in the second stint. There I say, could it be a three stop, unless he comes in for hards at the end? We'll have to see, but uh, aggressive strategy there from Seb. Two sets of soft so far this race. At the moment, the car behind us is lapping faster than us by around one second per lap. There you go, there's the information. Lewis is second lap quicker. Seb sets the purple lap. We're going to pit in this lap, though for the hard tyres, so let's have a strong in-lap if we can. Okay then, so I've just turned the engine down a little bit. We're going to come in now. We've got an 8.8 .8 second gap to Lewis. The pit lane in this year's game has been moved forward a bit. You can see here it's much earlier on, so it can catch you out, but be careful with that. But here we go then into the pit box. Let's have a nice, clean, easy stop please, and no dramas. Come on. There we go. Good stop, 2.4. We've got away quite well. I'm getting better with that now in terms of the pit release. So uh, that's good stuff. So all the big boys are going to go past, of course. Sebastian still set the pace with a 12-0. Lucas Weber responds on mediums. We're going to redo a nice bit. Clean air. Well, not anymore. There's no more stops because we're going to the end now. So we've done our prolonged first stint. And we're going to feed out in clean air right behind Verstappen. So uh, let's leave it in lean and none ERS mode to try and save a little bit of fuel and battery on this lap while we can. And then we're going to run it in standard engine mode pretty much to the finish. And hope that we have enough pace on these tyres to keep in front of Lewis. I've got a feeling that we're struggling in this race as a team because Seb's just been overtaken by Devon Butler. Bear in mind Seb wasn't on the soft tyres and Lewis is now opening up a gap at the front. It feels like the Mercedes have a little bit more pace than I said today and even Seb can't hold on. So I think it's going to be down to me now in terms of strategy. I've managed to save a nice bit of fuel and DRS so we can sit on that now and keep that you know, for an emergency. Although that's going to gradually get used up slowly in standard engine mode. But for now, we're going to try and focus on the lap times, try and be consistent. Yellow flag. Oh no. I think it's Seb. Seb's done. He's out. Damn it. I think he's done. Hopefully it's just, it's just a puncture. No, he's pulling over. He's done. Seb's out. Wow. Championship leader out of the Canadian Grand Prix. Big, big, big movement here in the championship in this race. No safety car or VSC it seems from that. So we're still waiting for our first one of the season. But Sebastian Vettel... The championship leader is out of the race and his closest rival, Lewis Hamilton, is P1. So it's up to us now in this race on our strategy, on our inverted strategy to try and pull something back for the team here today. Just starting to find my pace a little bit now on these hard tyres as we set first the best. Keep it up. Yep, into the top 10. I was just starting to catch Verstappen, who's on softs, of course, and his softs are starting to fade a little bit. So we're starting to find a bit more pace now, momentum. This is a critical phase in the race now because everyone on the two stop will start to struggle on their tyres, softs or medium. So this is my chance to make some pace difference and try and close the gap. And Max Verstappen pits in. There we go. He's had enough of those tyres. He's the first one to blink. So we're now out to P4 in this race. And another good lap there. Consistent pace is what we want. Lucas Weber up next. He's on the mediums. Unlike Verstappen who's on softs. And uh, Max has now gone on to the mediums for the final part of the race. So we're going to be at a big tyre deficit at the end. That's for sure in terms of overall pace. But uh, hopefully it will still be enough. As we just brushed up all. They're very lucky to not lose an end plate. Okay, now we've got Lewis Hamilton in the pit lane. He's also going to the medium tyres. There he is now leaving the pit lane. So uh, he's got a little bit to go yet in terms of pit exit. But we are going to still remain in front of him, but he's going to have that advantage of the pit exit to make up some lap time. There we go, then he's up to speed now. So that's the gap we have, pretty much. Around, I want to say, four seconds. So the gap has come down a little bit in that pissed off phase we had as we get that all wrong there, a little bit wide. We've got about four seconds on Lewis to the end of the race. Let's try and hold on as much as we can. And now I think Lucas Webber and Devin Butler are going to pit in. No, just Lucas Webber. So Devin Butler stays out a little bit longer. Lewis has got so much more pace than me. He's already catching me up so much in every sector. Gap is down to three seconds. It was 4.3 in sector one. I will admit this hard tyre is not a good tyre because uh, I've barely got any tyre wear, but it just doesn't feel that good. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to struggle here. And uh, the RS is slowly running out, even in just medium and also fuel as well. So it's going to be quite hard to keep Lewis behind. I think it's inevitable, but we'll try our best. Look at that lap, what a difference. Right, he's on me already. 
he's getting the run of me here. Lewis has got a lot of momentum. We're going to have to defend into this corner. Oh, we survived the first one. But, uh, you know, this is familiar. Where have you seen a 2019 Ferrari defend from Lewis Hamilton at a Canadian Grand Prix? Sounds awfully familiar, awfully recent. Can we do as good of a job, though? I guess we'll find out shortly. I don't think it's going to be as easy on these tyres. Lewis again within DRS here. Hopefully I've got enough that I don't have to use rich mix and I can try and save some fuel. Okay, we should be okay. Oh, he's on me already out of the chicane. And I've got no ERS to pretty much use as Devin Butler pits him. Just had to go defensive there. I wasn't sure about Lewis maybe going for a dive there. Trying to save some ERS if I can. Here comes Lewis. I'm going to have to defend again. Although this time he's going to get alongside me a lot earlier. We're going to hold the inside line though. Leave Lewis the room just about. But we're going to hold on one more time here. Look at the minimap, the two Red Bulls and Devon Butler in hot pursuit. We're going to have a horrible train behind us in this race and it's going to be a very, very long end to this race. Good exit out of the hairpin there, but still not enough and Lewis is going to have the legs on me here. Come on, Rich Mix do the job for me. Lewis is gaining, we're going to have to go defensive here, cover the inside. Into the chicane. Lewis around the outside, we get a warning there for cutting the corner, but... I had to leave the room. Lewis has got the RS though for the second time. And that seemed passed, unfortunately. I can't challenge now. If I had the RS there, I could have had a chance, but Lewis gets passed and he's into first place of the Canadian Grand Prix. Lewis set the pace, 11-5. No, we're not. We're staying out. We're committing to this. Oh, Devin Butler's on me here. He's going to have a run. Using Bridge Mix here. Try and stay in front. This is going to be so hard. The good thing is, though, Devon isn't hard like myself, so he won't get as good traction. I'm not boxing, Jeff. Sorry, mate. I wish I could cancel it, but I can't. Good exit out of the hairpin. Hopefully, Lucas Webber can do me a favour and try and have a little bit of a battle with Devon Butler there. That'll give me a chance to pull away a little bit. Oh my god, look at the speed difference. Here comes Butler with the RS. Come on, can we stay in front? Yes, just, we stand in front, he doesn't commit to a move into the chicane. Good exit there again, that should be enough. We we'll stay in front. Oh, Butler's on me again here. This time around the outside. We're going to just take the position there, take the race in line. I need to save fuel, I need to save the RS, I'm so low on everything. I'm really struggling. The consumption is so high here. That's a terrible hairpin. Hopefully we'll get a good exit though. You know what, we'll take that. Although Devon's going to have to run again here. Look at the speed, he's turned up the engine. He's going to the inside. Whoa! Fair play, he's gone for it. He's going to be having a poor exit though. Here comes the Red Bull. Okay, keep on him. You might make a mistake. Oh dear. This is not... Oh my god. Webber's absolutely sent one down the inside of Devon Butler there. We're all over the place. We've lost the positions. We've lost the time. And we're down to P5, just like that. They're still battling here. And Lucas Weber takes P2. Right then, well, change of plan. I want to see how far beyond Perez is because I'm up in and try and get the extra point for the fastest lap. Because there's no way we're going to re-engage. These guys are too fast. Unfortunately, Perez is uh, too close. And I don't think we'd get... We'd come up behind him, of course, but we'd have to pass him. And he's also faster than me, to be fair. Do I just go for it? And just hit, try my luck? And try and pass him on track? I do have fresh subs available. I'll see how many cars there are, because I don't know if there's anyone near him. We'll see him now on the crossover. Oh, it's going to be really close. We could come out in traffic. You know what? I'm going to play it safe. I'm not going to come in. For the sake of a point and risking, you know, a bad pit stop. And uh, speeding into the pit lane. I'm not going to go for it. I'm going to just play it safe. Right, well, we didn't have the speed today, unfortunately. We tried our best and uh, we lost the other car as uh, Lewis Hamilton picks up 
the W in Canada, so it's going to be a poor race for us. Only P5, one car finish in the race. Disappointing, really, but you know what? We've had some good races recently, and uh, this was just a bad one, but still, we're going to come across the line to finish the Kian Grand Prix P5. Grazie, ragazzi. Buona giornata, difficile. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Grande lavoro. Grazie a tutti. And Mercedes have pulled off a great victory here today. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today, everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. Right, so here we have the final race results as Lewis Hamilton and Devon Butler pick up a 1-2 for Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton securing the W here today at Canada ahead of Lucas Webber and Max Verstappen. Lucas Webber beating his teammate to the podium there in P3. We come home P5, the only Ferrari in this race and a really bad day at the office for us and then the boys in red. And then Sergio Perez P6 there to Kevin Magnussen, Daniel Ricciardo, Roman Grosjean and Nico Hülkenberg rounding out the top 10. They're both Renault cars in the points after missing out in Monaco. And towards the bottom, just to confirm, it's a Sebastian Vettel, the former championship leader, finishes last and did not finish in this race. So what does that mean for the championships? Well, first of all, in the Drivers' Championship, Lewis Hamilton, a big, big swing in the championship for him. He really opens up a big gap after that, and he's 25 clear of Sebastian Vettel, 34 points clear of myself. So a big swing in Hamilton's favour. Devon Butler as well closes down the gap to me, and he's now nine points behind. And Lucas Webber keeps himself in contention. Max Verstappen still struggling to really get any momentum going this season in the Red Bull and his in his side of the garage. But in terms of the constructors, we lose the lead to Mercedes after having you know an 18-point gap going into this race. We're now 16 points behind, and that's how much a one-two finish can really hurt you especially when only one car finishes the race. So, uh, yeah, disappointing one for us here today. And um, we'll try and bounce back next time in Paul Ricard. But, yeah, first of all, before we jump into Paul Ricard, we're going to put some upgrades in the car to try and see if we can try and alleviate and fix some of this performance. So let's jump into it and let's try and upgrade this car. Okay, so here we are on the laptop. We've got a couple of uh, interview transcripts once again. And uh, to be fair, there's not much in these ones compared to uh, last time. Last time it was brutal. But uh, this time, Lucas Weber, uh, nothing really major to say. Um, you know, I wasn't even mentioned, so there's not much to say here. Literally just um, giving himself a little bit of credit and also giving his team a bit of credit. And then uh, Devin Butler as well. I didn't really say much except for the second paragraph where he roasted his own teammate, Lewis Hamilton, saying that he's not even on his level Lewis Hamilton is not even on his level. I mean, this guy just keeps on chatting shit. And the, the funny thing is, that wasn't even at me this time. It was actually at his own teammates. So that's going to lose, lose some points in the, um, you know, the reputations charts for Mercedes. But nonetheless, let's delve into some upgrades, shall we? Because we have 2,100 points to spend. So let's have a look. So currently, we had an engine upgrade scheduled for this race, which failed. So we're going to get that on the car for the next race in France. And we're going to add to that. So we're going to look at reliability as a possibility as well because I want to try and sharpen that up so um, the gearbox is going to be one that I want to improve because we're, we're still I want to try and make sure we, we, we improve that so the gearbox is going to get improved and then we have 1,100 points to spend and the next chassis upgrade is a pretty big one to be fair it's a major one and I'm tempted to do it it will take three weeks to arrive or I could go for aerodynamic which you know it is where we're already strongest anyway so I'm going to go for the chassis one and uh, get that major upgrade in the car and that should arrive for my home race at the British Grand Prix. So there we go, a couple of upgrades in the car and then towards the end of the season we'll start working on you know, department efficiency and whatnot. But we've got a few upgrades on the way and uh, hopefully that will give us some big performance boosts over the coming races. With that being said though guys, that is going to be it for this episode of Korean Radio. If you did enjoy it, then drop a like and get subscribed for daily from on content and also turn on notifications to not miss a video from me. Finally, check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them. But other than that guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next episode very soon. But until then, it's goodbye from me.